So my plan for the week was to talk about the mainstream media manipulations around mass shooting, but the Canadian gun ban has gotten so out of control I think it's necessary to talk a bit about it. If you don't know what's happening, which seems to be the case for a lot of Canadians, Trudeau made an order in council that would be the US equivalent to an executive order, listing 11 firearm designs, among which the CZ Scorpion, AR-15, N14, etc., as well as some extra characteristics such as muzzle energy of 10,000 joules, which is 7,376 foot-pound, or a barrel with an inner diameter 20 millimeters or over. The law by itself is listing 1500 rifles by name, mostly the different variations of AR-15 or M14. For example, Daniel Defense Mark 18 or Springfield Armory M1A, and they have all been reclassified by the RCMP pretty much immediately as prohibited. But the RCMP has not been stopping there. Oh no 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 no. So Bill Blair is claiming not to be targeting Hunter, but if you know anything about modern shotguns, then you know that most of them have the ability to accept what we call chokes. A choke is essentially a piece of metal to change the pattern of the shots once you have fired. The choke itself is screwed inside of the barrel of the shotgun. So obviously the barrel of the shotgun needs to be a little bit larger if it needs to accommodate this type of device. The problem now is that when the choke is not installed, every single 12 gauge and above will have a barrel with an inner diameter over 20 millimeters. Firing without a choke is unadvisable because you will be ruining the threads inside of the barrel, but the RCMP does not care about that. It always does its calculation or measurement in a worst case scenario, which is without a choke. And of course it means that if your shotgun is even capable of taking a barrel that would accept a choke, then it will also become prohibited immediately. So that's already a pretty big lie from the minister, but sadly that's not where it stops. The RCMP, probably with orders from Trudeau or Bill Blair, have also been banning a bunch of semi-automatic shotguns like the Diria 12 and at least one other under the pretense that it was an AR-15 variant, even though the only common point was a carry handle. For the 10,000 joules limit, I obviously cannot be sure why it is there, but my guess is that Trudeau and his cronies have watched too many movies featuring an M82. But the thing is, it's not just banning the 50 BMG, it's banning a plethora of rifles capable of being chambered in comparable calibers. So rifle for very large games such as bisons, elephants, crocodiles, etc., such as the 460 Weatherby, have also been banned, despite being bolt-action rifles. It means that everything for very long-range shooting, like the 408 Chaitak or 416 Barretts, has also been banned. And just like with the chokes, just the possibility of being able to take barrels or bolts for this particular caliber is sufficient to get banned by the RCMP. But the semi-automatics are the ones really getting boned, with new bottles added to the prohibited list every single day. To give you a bit of context for the screens I'm going to be showing, in Canada the RCMP makes entries into the firearm reference table for each firearm on the Canadian market. These entries list the spec sheet with calibers and category of the gun, and all of a sudden, COVID has become a reason to close the database from being seen by the public. However, if you are a gun shop, you can still consult the list, and that's how we know RCMP is doing something fishy. Specifically over the last week, the RCMP has been reclassifying everything, including guns that were made specifically to get into the non-restricted category, including those that had received advice from the RCMP during the design process. For example, we have the Maccabi Defense SLR. As you can see, that thing resembles a bit an AR-15, and let's be honest, it quacks like an AR-15 as well. But the receiver was modified specifically with the advice of the RCMP in order to get into the non-restricted category, which allows it to be used outside of the RCMP approved shooting range. So now this company that has existed only for a couple of years has its only product for which it had worked with the RCMP in order to get it to market, destroyed by the stroke of a pen of a tyrant. It is the same situation for Arberta Tactical Rifle Supply. Their modern hunter rifle is essentially a high quality AR-10 that was modified to not be compatible with other AR-10 on the market, which is why you can see a drop inside the receiver. This particular rifle had also been present on the market for many many years without even a single problem. Its little brothers, the Modern Varmint and Modern Sporter, all rifles costing multiple thousands of dollars by the way, have also been reclassified as prohibited as well. This tyrannical law has absolutely devastated these companies, and considering the RCMP is showing no sign of slowing down, I think we are going to see every single centerfire rifle banned before the end of June if it continues. 
Handguns are not looking any better considering Trudeau has been saying for many years that he wanted to give the different cities the power to ban handguns from the territory, something that Blount, the mayor of Montreal, has been demanding repeatedly for a long time and might finally see. Ultimately, the cost is going to be the biggest issue for Canada as a whole. Beside the fact that forcing someone to sell the possession at a fraction of a price is something the Mafia would do, the cronies of Trudeau estimated the cost of the mandatory buyback, something that also didn't work in Australia, would be around 400 million, for the 1500 models that were originally on the list, mind you. Problem is, the RCMP has been adding to the fucking thing like it's an Olympic sport. There are 2.2 million license holders in Canada almost all of them having multiple firearms and I guarantee you, most of them having at least one of these illegal firearms. Which means this thing is not going to cost 400 millions, but it's going to cost billions of dollars on top of what Trudeau is pouring into the Covid lockdown. So in short, Canada is well on its way to become the new Venezuela, Trudeau doing exactly what Maduro did with confiscating firearms and distributing billions to the population even though he doesn't even have the whole revenue to do that. But don't worry, this is all for safety and the greater good. So before that happens, please subscribe, click on that bell, and leave a like if you want to see more on how a western country doesn't become a dictatorship. Because, you know, that could never happen. Again. Salut bonsoir! <laughs>